Hi, my name is Justine Harkness, and in this video, we'll look at how to determine a reaction's overall order based on its rate law equation. When we're looking at rate laws, we're really talking about kinetics, which is a measure of how fast a reaction will occur. This is distinct from thermodynamics, like delta G, which will tell us whether or not a reaction will happen. So let's dig into this difference a little bit more. So here we are looking at a graph of free energy and the reaction coordinate, which will track how the reaction proceeds over time. If we were to just compare the free energy of the reactants and products, that will tell us the delta G. This is what we use to determine whether or not a reaction will happen. So in this case, our delta G is negative, so this would be spontaneous. Kinetics tells us how fast a reaction will happen, and that is all based on the activation energy, or how much energy you need to put in in order for a reaction to go through its transition state. Let's look at an example of this, a real life conundrum. Say you want to go on vacation. Now, vacations are awesome. So these are definitely, you know, spontaneous reactions, the going on a vacation. So you have, you know, your home and you have your destination. Certainly a spontaneous reaction. Now, this first path would be like if you took an airplane. You know, you just drive to the airport, you get on and you're at your destination in no time. So this would be really fast as a low activation energy. Say instead of taking an airplane, you were to take a train. It has a little bit more effort that you need to put in, a greater activation energy, so to speak. So this would be a bit slower. Or you could drive. That's the most uh, effort you need to put in to get to your destination. So this would be the slowest, and it would have the greatest activation energy. So notice, in each of these reactions, you have the same delta G. These are all spontaneous reactions. But the amount of time that it will take for the reaction to go to completion varies. So the kinetics is separate from the thermodynamics. And what we're going to focus on in this video is the kinetics. And we're going to start with the rate law. The rate law will tell us how the concentration of reactants impacts the speed of a reaction. Whenever we are determining the rate law for a chemical reaction, we can do it via two ways. We can either use the slowest step in a reaction mechanism, or we can use experimental data, which is something we'll look at in a later video. The one thing to really note, though, is that you cannot determine the rate of a reaction just based on the balanced chemical reaction. You must use one of these two methods. So let's take a look at that rate law. So you'll always have the generic rate law looking something like this, where K here is your rate constant. And this will um, be different for different reactions and can change uh, based on temperature. This next part here, this A to the X, B to the Y, tells us how the concentration of each reactant impacts the rate of the reaction. So the, these terms here, X and Y, are the orders of the reaction. We'll uh, talk about that uh, a bit more in a later video. And if we're looking at the overall order of a reaction, that is the sum of all of the exponents from your rate law equation. So let's look at a few examples to investigate these points a little bit more. So in this question, with uh, several subparts, we are asked for the overall order of the reaction. So remember, in order to calculate the overall order, you need to take the sum of the exponents in your rate law equation. So for part A, you see that we have an exponent of two, and we would add to that the implied exponent of one, which would give us an overall order of reaction of three. In part B, notice we only have one reactant. Here we have an order of two, so this would have an overall order of two. 
Part C is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. Remember that we noted that the valence chemical reaction does not give us the rate law. So we have two of these N2O5s, but note that the exponent in our rate law is one. So this would be an overall order of one, even though we have two of these reactants in our balanced chemical equation. Let's take a look at D. This is another great example. Notice we just have rate equals K. There's nothing here that tells us about the concentration of reactants. This means that the rate here is independent of the concentration of ammonia. So this would be like putting NH3 to the zero power because any number raised to the zero power is one. So this would have an overall order of zero. And finally, in part E, notice in our rate law equation, both of our reactants have an implied exponent of one, so our overall order for our reaction would be two. So now you should feel more comfortable using a rate law equation to determine the overall order of a reaction.